community uh, on those things. And then uh, another discussion item, uh, Andy Green is kind of from the United Way is spearheading this is he, he's talking about a concept of school, a school supply drive being coordinated by the nonprofits so that there would be no expectation of parents at the elementary level to get school supplies each year. That basically on the first day of school, a student would come there, here would be their bag of school supplies and, and really kind of take parents out of that and talking about what would be the process of pull it, pulling that together. I think more of an equity piece is what he's looking at that, that every child walking in on the first day of school has the same set of school supplies. Yeah, Andy Green, we're gonna be visiting with him next Wednesday. We always catch up with the United Way. I know you are a big proponent of the United Way. Yeah, I, I'm on the board. Uh, I was a campaign chair probably about three years ago. So, you know, the thing that I've always appreciated about United Way is the money stays local. And uh, I've even been on those committees that uh, listen to the presentations each spring for the ask of these different organizations. Um, and I tell you what, the need is there. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things I, I would I would throw out is, you know, if you are looking for an organization where your money's targeted towards local and you know that money's going to go to uh, people and kids in our community, I, I would encourage people to look at the United Way. Yeah. Well, the start of the school year, and we're going to talk about that, but I would imagine you see that need every day at school. Absolutely. Um, you know, with, you know, you hear a lot of times uh, about educators taking money out of their pocket and, and doing things. The, the, you get a lot of that throughout the year, but particularly at the beginning of the year when it's startup, uh, you know, uh, this is where most teachers, uh, you know, they went in, into it for a reason. It's for kids, and so it tugs at their heart. So when that, when that kid doesn't have those materials, it, a lot of times it's the teacher digging out of their, their pocket to uh, have those materials there for the next day for their kids. So, uh, again, um, you know, one of the things we just were talking about is uh, the hot lunch program in Clinton this year. Uh, the federal program, there was a federal program we qualified for that extends free lunch for all uh, students. So again, that was an equity piece that, you know, all students can go through that lunch line and and, and do that. So um, I think there's just some equitable pieces when you talk about school supplies, uh, uh, ability to eat, those kinds of things. It, yeah. it, it shouldn't matter what your household. There should be a level amount of services and, um, you know, uh, one thing I wasn't going to talk about, I, I'm actually going to be going to Washington, D.C. next week as, uh, on a lo lobbyist trip. And one of the things I will be talking a lot of, about is this equity piece and that uh, poverty should not play an effect on how a student's education goes. That it shouldn't matter where you live in the country, you should have access to a, a high quality education. Started the school year, it's been about three weeks now. Have you had the opportunity, and I'm sure you have, to visit every one of the schools and uh, see what's going on? Oh, multiple times. I, I think one of the th one of the things my job is to ke to keep a pulse of the building and that. And I really think that we are off to an excellent start. Um, uh, we had a change in leadership both at uh, Clinton High School and Jefferson, and I think in those two buildings that change has been re been received very well so far. Uh, been very pleased with that and. Uh, like I said, I th there's always an optimism at the beginning of the school year, and uh, you know I feel a, a real strong vibe. Uh, I'll be honest, our first two home football games, uh, great community support. We've had great crowds. Uh, um, that the end of that Davenport West game when we were making the drive mm -hmm. and ended up two yards short, that was as loud as I've heard our home side since I've come back as a superintendent. I mean that crowd was into the game and. It was just a shame that we didn't get one more play. <laughs> I think one more play, we would have been in the end zone. But uh, just just that enthusiasm, you could just feel the emotion and energy. And, and some of that is really rubbed off into our buildings as well. So uh, hopefully we'll continue to move it forward. And uh, But I, th I believe we're off to a great start. That's good. Uh, one thing you wanted to talk, talk about, and again, Gary DeLacy, our guest, school safety initiatives. So two major things that are going on this year, and I blogged about it last week. 
uh, but I just wanted to bring it up in this forum as well. Uh, one of them is, is, and I will give credit to uh, the Clinton County Sheriff's Department and the Clinton Police Department. Back in July, they brought in a group from Illinois to talk about uh, crisis, uh, that crisis intervention if you do have that intruder situation happen. And I'll, a lot of this is probably evolved because of Evaldi, Texas, that, you know, we, we look at it that and say, wow, there look like there was 100 emergency people there, yet they seem to be paralyzed. Well, this training really talks about the roles of the emergency people coming into that situation. If you're the first person, if you're the fifth person, if you're the tenth person coming on the scene, you get a defined role and you're going to be trained in that role. And then what is the interaction with the upper school personnel, which would be me and the building principal of that building and those kinds of things? Because obviously that, that, that's always been my concern is that communication aspect. Like we, we've run drills with our teachers and kids, but we really have lacked, how is it gonna work with that communication and those major decisions that gotta be made? Like, okay, what, are we, what, what can we safely tell parents right now? Where is the reunification site? When, when do I call for the buses to come and get kids to get them to the reunification site? So, uh, I think the Clinton County Sheriff's Department in their budget is paying for this training, which is going to happen the last week of January. Uh, it's a full two-day training. The second day will involve school personnel, which for our school district will be January 24th. So, uh, you know, I hate, you know, in some ways it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I mean, we're at this point in our society that we're, we're to this level of training, but again, what I want to tell the community, this is best practice right now. And I, I do think, you know, heaven forbid, if it would ever happen here, we would certainly want a, a more efficient and quicker response than what happened to Evaldi. And in those in incredible situations that even as we drill it, um, and the thing is, is they, they, this part of our training will be tabletop exercises where they basically roll dice. So there's some unpredictability that the the role of the dice will dictate like, okay, now this happened. So it, it's going to be, wow. a lot of it's just mental exercises, but I think it's just that preparation, like when it happens, hey, we've have thought about all these different scenarios and then we're ready, we're ready to go in those situations and do the best we can to save lives yeah well you know it's it is needed but boy gone are the days where it was just the fire drill was the thing that you were worried yeah. about well and i'll be honest you were still doing the required two fire drills <laughs> per semester two tornado drills per semester i'll be honest that those probably need to be looked at a little bit and yeah. is that you know do those go down and, and do we do a little bit more of this training uh this is what keeps me up at night in terms of uh, of that the second safety uh, initiative is this hundred million dollars from the governor and well from the state basically and uh, we've gotten some information now it can be up to fifty thousand dollars per building so we have six buildings that serve kids right now uh, and uh, just yesterday the the I got a call from a company called TerraTech out of Florida, which the state had contracted. In order to, you to, for us to start the process, we have to have an assessment. So uh, they're scheduled to come in November and they will, they're actually gonna spend about four hours in every one of our buildings going through and doing a safety assessment of each of our buildings. And then from there, those gaps that we have, probably looking at terms of locking mechanisms, security cameras, security lighting, more of the supply equipment kinds of things, uh, looking at that and then based on that report, then we can develop a plan for each of our buildings and, and enhance our building security. Again, visiting with Gary DeLacy, we got a lot more to talk about. Let's take a break for the weather brought to you by Joe Leonard. We're patching some dense fog again this morning that will quickly lift and give us partly cloudy skies this afternoon. Highs into the mid 80s, a few clouds overnight, temperatures dropping into the mid 60s. And for your Friday, a mix of clouds and sun, 
Highs back in the mid-80s. With your Storm Track 8 forecast, I'm meteorologist Andrew Stutsky. Fair skies right now. Southeast winds. Our temperature currently in the mid-60s. Our update brought to you by Joe Leonard. The Joe Leonard Agency has been serving Clinton and the surrounding area for 28 years and is licensed in both Iowa and Illinois. The Joe Leonard Agency offers products for home, auto, life, and commercial, plus discounts for bundling home and auto policies. Joe Leonard staff of Ann Jordan and Chris Mickelson are also licensed agents. Give the Joe Leonard agency a call at 563-243-8788 or visit them at 413 South 2nd Street, Clinton. Products underwritten by American Family Insurance and their affiliates. We continue on FYI with Gary DeLacy, Superintendent of Schools at Clinton. I know you're involved with this, the Hall of Honor, and you're taking nominations right now. Yeah, uh, we just put out uh, a press release earlier this week. Uh, we're in that window right now between now and November 1st for the Hall of Honor. So the Hall of Honor is to recognize alumni of Clinton High School that have really excelled in all areas with the exception of athletics. We already have an athletic Hall of Fame, but we're looking at people that have excelled in a lot of other areas. So, you know, some of the names that, that, that we've nominated in the past, Charles Tony. Uh, uh, really the, described as the Martin Luther King before Martin Luther King. Uh, a Lulu Johnson comes to mind. Lulu was uh, the first uh, black woman to get a PhD in the country, and she was a, a graduate of Clinton High School. Uh, Kyle Kettleson, when we talk about the arts, is a huge opera singer. Uh, Krista Voda, who was in uh, national sports broadcasting on that. So uh, th and then we've had a number of people in the military, including my right-hand man, uh, Wes Golden. Who, so there's a n number of categories, all of them, you know, basically anything non-athletic. It d doesn't mean that someone like last year, Duke Slater, got in, but Duke Slater got in because of his judicial service in the Chicago area, which was very extensive. So th those are the areas we're looking at, the, all these different areas outside of athletics where people have excelled and that they would be a role model. Uh, if you're interested, you can get on our website or you can stop by our admin office. We can print off nomination papers. We're basically in a seven-week window right now. Uh, one of the worries of the committee is, is that by our bylaws, um, after you've been nominated for three years, and we had a lot of nominations in year one, if you haven't been selected, then those drop off. Mm -hmm. So we really do not have very many nominations coming into this year. We're going to ha really have to have a strong push of new nominations, or people could be renominated uh, from that initial class. But in order to do that, so we're really reaching out to the community. If there's been some Clinton High grads or alumni that have really went out and have made a difference in the world, we would certainly love to look at those nominations. You know, it is great when you do pay tribute to those who have walked the halls of Clinton High School, either academically or athletically. It, it really does add to the school and the, and the meaning of going to Clinton High School. Absolutely. And, and one of the things in our mission statement is serve. they serve as role models for our current students. So the way we do that Hall of Honor is they're, they're, a Friday in April, they'll be there most of the day and they will have opportunities to interact with our current students that and is tell great. their story. That is great. You had mentioned this earlier in the program. You're going to be in Washington, D.C. What's this all about? Well, I, this year I'm the uh, president of the uh, AEA superintendents, and annually, I didn't know this up to a few weeks ago, annually they do a legislative advocacy trip to Washington, D.C., where the AEA chiefs and the presidents and vice presidents of, of these AEAs go. So since I'm the president this year, I've been asked to go. Uh, I've done a lot of legislative advocacy in Des Moines, but I've never done Washington, D.C. Uh, so this will be a new experience for me next week. But there's certainly things uh, that Washington can do. We talked earlier about equity issues. I can think about things with Title IX. I can think of things with special education being fully funded. There's also been some really great things Washington has done. The ESSER funds, the, those pandemic dollars we have gotten, we, we've opened up 17 additional teaching, counseling positions in the district right now, which we know are temporary positions until the ESSER money runs out in 2024. But 
it's given us additional resources to address student needs due to the pandemic. So part of it will be a thank you, too, for those funds, because without them, we wouldn't have been able to create these additional 17 positions, not to mention we're doing things with air quality. Uh, the climate control we're putting into Yord is being paid with ESSER funds. Uh, next summer, both Whittier and Bluff, our two oldest buildings, will be renovated in terms of air quality. Uh, that, that qualified for that ESSER funding with COVID. So uh, part of it will be a thank you, too, because it's certainly been able to give us some opportunities to invest in our kids or invest in the, in the teaching and learning environment in terms of air quality. Uh, so uh, it'll, be, it'll be a great experience. I've never been to Washington, D.C. before, so I, I, I'm sure my eyes will be wide open. <laughs> Now, will you be there for how many days, and, and will you get an opportunity to see things like the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument, things along Well, I'm hoping we'll get some of that. A, a lot. I, we're leaving, I've been told, early Wednesday morning, flying out, and then basically all day Thursday and half day Friday, we're, we're actually meeting with, like, you know, our current senators, you know, Senator Ernst, Senator Grassley, uh, representatives... Uh, there and then the, some of them that are, that might be across multiple states but deal with education and things like that I'm, I'm assuming we'll have some opportunities particularly in the evening that we can do some yeah. sightseeing and some things like that but from what i i did see the schedule it looks like we're going to be pretty <laughs> packed with meetings especially all day thursday and ha Friday morning up to about noon, uh, actually doing legislative advocacy, but that's what we're there for. Well, enjoy the trip, and, and it should be quite an experience for you, Gary. It, it, it will be. I'll, I'll snap some pictures. Like I said, it's the first time I've ever been to Washington, D.C., so I'll, I'll probably be a little bit like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> Homecoming week will be coming up at the end of the month, and uh, that's always a special time at the high school. It is, and I, I'll be honest, of all the districts I've been with, I think Clinton does homecoming better than anyone i mean you, you go i mean the parade i mean runs close to a half hour where you know in most places a homecoming parade is lucky if it's 10 minutes uh i'll be honest if you've never been to the coronation of course you've been a part of that uh just the just the, the class i mean the kids are dressed up the, the 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 just the the moment i think the kids treat that right as a dress-up day it's just a fantastic the involvement of the community particularly with the pancake breakfast and and things like that uh ju just a, a wonderful week to celebrate um uh, the clinton high school uh, the traditions of the past uh, a lot of that those traditions they talk about the trident and the and those kinds of things come back uh, you know, I, I can think back to when I was a beginning teacher in the 80s and, and how those traditions have stayed uh, and through the course of time. So uh, a very special week for us. And, uh, you know, and then obviously the dance on that Saturday. You know, what I think is special about the homecoming week is that the student council gets involved. I mean, th those students who have been selected to be the leaders of their class and of the student body get the opportunity to show that leadership absolutely and by by that you notice by about friday you know friday morning of the pancake breakfast they look awfully tired <laughs> <laughs> it's been a it's been a pretty busy week for them and it not it wasn't just because they got up early for the pancake breakfast they've been working their fannies off all week putting on all these different activities and we're only touching you know you know, I, I think back to float building, and I, when I was a teacher supervising the float building, and that was a great time just to to, to socialize with kids, help yeah. them build their floats, yeah. and and do you know just just the things that are even off the radar on that. And, and you know, I I reflected, and I thought, God, that was just really neat, <laughs> and yeah. those kinds of things. Where did they build the floats now? When I was in high school, it used to be the bus bar, and we used to do the you know in the old parking and, lot. And what there. I'm hearing now is that they are like. They're looking for a parent's garage or somewhere oh, yeah. because we well, used to used to have that. That's what I remember. We right. used to use use that transportation barn, and they emptied it out and let them do that. And I thought that worked really well because all of them were being built together, and, and it, it was a kind of a big social event. You might have 200 kids there working on five or six different floats, but now I think they are looking for a parent or whatever, and is there a space, and they meet there and, and build. And I would have, now, how often, do you have any idea how often the student council gets together? 
Uh, I, I really don't know. I would assume as the planning for homecoming week, they're probably meeting multiple times right, right now planning for homecoming week i think once you you get past homecoming week i i'm, I'm guessing it may be more of a once every two weeks okay sort of thing. and you have an advisor yep and and i think they one or two advisors because there's plenty of work i mean just the yeah, the homecoming week itself is a very heavy lift so uh yeah uh, and it and basically and we still do this i think every uh, teaching staff member of Clinton High has a homecoming activity. So supervising float building, helping with the parade, uh, you know, helping with the coronation, supervising the dance. So it, it truly is a team effort by the entire staff to be able to cover all those activities during the week. Well, we always appreciate you coming in every month. We'll visit with you again when we get into October. When we get into October and November, what are some of the things we may be talking about, Gary? Well, I think uh, next month we'll probably be talking a little bit about the election coming up. I mean, that, which will be in early November. Uh, what are the key educational issues that are that will be a, a part of that? Uh, at that point, we'll ha we should have uh, October first is count date, so we'll probably have an idea mm -hmm. of what, where our certified enrollment will be at, at that point, um, and. Uh, We'll be near the end of the fall sports season. We'll kind of see where those teams are at as well. And um, I'm sure some other things will come up okay. as well. So, <laughs> hey, again, thank you so much and enjoy your time in our nation's capital. I will.